Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, people of God, let's stand to our feet. Welcome to Resurrected Hope Ministries, our Sunday God experience. Hallelujah. Come on and praise God. Praise God. I know it's raining outside. It's the Sunday after Thanksgiving. But we don't want to cheat God on our praise this afternoon. So come on, let's get with the service. Come on, come on, come on. We welcome each of you to Resurrected Hope Ministries. We are going to open up. We're going to come with our fire, with our praise, with our worship. Hallelujah. We welcome you in the name of Jesus. So we're going to gather together and pray. We want you to pray. Don't be a spectator this afternoon, but we want you to be a participator. For what you put in the service is what you're going to get out of the service. So we want everybody, everybody to pray on this afternoon. Father, in the name of Jesus, we call on your great name. We call on you, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. We thank you. We acknowledge you in this place. We acknowledge your presence. We acknowledge your glory. We acknowledge your power in the name of Jesus. We call on the I am that I am. We call on God that sits in heaven. We call on you, Father, for no other help we know. For, Father, you are God and God alone. God, you are complete in yourself. You are El Shaddai and Elohim. You are the mighty God. Lord, we would be nothing without you. Lord, we're most miserable without you. So we invite your presence. We invite your glory to fill this place. We invite your glory, God, in the name of Jesus. We invite your presence to saturate this building. For without your presence, our gathering is in vain. So we, Lord, say thank you. We appreciate you, Lord, that you woke us up this morning. That you started us on our way. We appreciate your protection. Even through the night, oh God. We thank you for this Thanksgiving weekend. For God, we are blessed. We are blessed. We are blessed. For gathering together with family and friends. We thank you for sparing our lives to see yet another day, oh God. Oh, we honor, we honor, we honor, we honor, we honor you, Jesus. For you alone are holy. You alone are righteous. God, we appreciate life that we have hands to worship. We have hands to give you glory. That we have feet to shout and give you praise. That you've given us a voice to cry out to you. Because somebody can't even speak, Lord. Somebody can't get out of the bed. Somebody's body is wrapped with pain. But you had mercy on us. And we say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh God, we worship you. We cry holy, 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 holy. Righteous in the Lamb of God. Jesus, you said you dwell in the midst of praise. So we invite you to bring your presence. We invite your power. We invite your glory, your glory. Jesus, we just thank you. Sing your healing. Send the divine presence in this place. Sing your power. In the name of Jesus, sing your power, Lord. In the name of Jesus, don't let our gathering be in vain. In the name of Jesus, touch every soul in this place. Set us on fire this afternoon. Let the anointing destroy you. Destroy the power of hell. Break every chain. Break the bondage of depression. Break the bondage of suicidal thoughts. Break the bondage of negativity. In the name, in the name, in the name of Jesus. We command sickness. Go back to the pit of hell. We command every demonic activity. Go to the pit of hell. You are not welcome here. In the name of 
Jesus. Oh, send revival in our souls. Send renewed strength, oh God, so that God will have the strength to make it another day. My God, remember the pastor of today as he brings forth the word, oh God. We're asking that you saturate him with an anointing to bring forth your word with might, with power, with clarity. Touch his vessel, oh God. Give him strength in his body. Give him clarity in his mind. Give him power and anointing in his voice. Lord, that will be changed by your word. Put resurrected hope on somebody's mind this afternoon. That they'll be compelled to come to the house. My God, we speak, oh God, to the virtual world. Compel them to come out of the screen. Compel them and shake them, Father. Let this service come across somebody's desk. Somebody's TV screen. Somebody's phone, oh God. And it will be life changing in the name of Jesus. For your word can go to the north, south, east, and west. In the name of Jesus. Let the anointing be felt in the airways. Let the anointing be felt, Lord God. That they'll be compelled, oh God, to come in the house. In the name of Jesus, remember our households and our families as we gather together to hear today. Lord, meet our needs. Answer our prayers. In the name of Jesus, God, we thank you. God, we praise you. God, we worship you. Come on, people of God. Clap your hands and worship him. Wave your hands and worship him. Come on, come on, come on. Worship, worship, worship him. Hallelujah, Jesus. He alone is worthy. He alone is glorious. He alone is worthy. Jesus, your Lord. Jesus, your Lord. Jesus, your Lord. Jesus, your Lord. Come on, clap your hands. Come on out of your seats. Come on and clap your hands. Come on and clap your hands. That's the least you can give your God. Hallelujah to highest praise. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you. We give this service to you. Have your way, have your way. In the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you. We praise you. In Jesus' name. Come on and worship him. Worship, worship. Come on, 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 come on. Shake it off, shake it off, shake it off. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For he is worthy. He alone is worthy to be praised. Glory be to God. We thank God because there's so many. I, I watch the news and I was watching the news this morning and there is a fatal, life debilitating disease called ALS. Yes. And you know, you, you can be fine and then all of a sudden when this disease attacks your body, it attacks the nervous system. Yes. So all of a sudden you can't talk, you can't walk, you can't do anything. Gradually, it just takes your very function away. So we ought to be grateful, hallelujah, that we have our mouth that we can say hallelujah, that we have our hands to lift, that we can wave, that we have our feet, that we can shout if we want to, because there are people that are a prisoner to their body. Their mind wants to do it, but they can't move. So we don't need to take these things for granted. Because if it weren't for the grace and the mercy of God, there go I. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. All right, we're going to go into our praise and worship on this, this afternoon. You do have your papers with you. We're going to sing some of the hymns on today. Hallelujah. We won't sing all the verses, but we'll sing a couple of verses, and we're just going to get on out of the way. I think the hymns are important because we have a whole generation that don't even know the hymns of the church. 
So we need to keep them alive sometimes. Hallelujah. I'm pressing, excuse me, on the upward way. New heights I'm gaining.
in this service on this afternoon. At this time, hallelujah, we are going to do our welcome and our meet and greet. Uh, we thank and praise God for you, you and you that pressed your way out. If this is your first time visiting with Resurrected Hope Ministries, please stand to your feet. Hallelujah. Looks like we are all home, folks, this afternoon. Hallelujah. So as we do as hope, let's welcome one another, love on one another in Jesus' name. Amen. under the anointing and the power of God. So open your hearts on this afternoon as we receive Pastor Jonathan Perry in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, clap your hands.
bring forth your word in all of its simplicity, Lord God. Anoint me for such a time as this. I decrease, you increase, all of you, none of me. In Jesus' name, Lord God, those that are afflicted, those that are sick, those that are bound, those that desire to be here can be here. We ask, Lord God, that you heal, deliver, set free. Lord God, work the will and the do in their lives. The sinner man, the backslider. Lord God, and those that don't know you in the part of their sons. In this prayer, we seal in the name of Jesus. Let every heart say amen. 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 You may be seated. Hallelujah. My God, we praise God for being God. Amen. 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 And when God is in the room, it don't matter if you got two or two hundred. You can still feel it. And we praise God for his divine presence. I have been charged to encourage you this afternoon. And some of what I am about to say has been said in the past. However, we must understand that the word of God is repetitious so that you and I understand the important importance of the person, the theme, or the event. That's why it's repetitious. God wants us to get it. He wants us to believe it. He wants us to live it, even if we don't understand it. Amen? So I understand some concepts here, and living in the day and time in which we live, and in the season in which God has us in currently, that you've been going through, I know, I, I know you've been going through. There has been some sickness, there has been diseases, and there has been pain, and uh, there's been hurt, there's been fear and anxiety, and there has been worry. You're pressed out of measure. Your back is against the wall. I know some of you. I, I can feel it. You're, and I've been there. And you're cornered with seemingly no way out but to face what is challenging your very life. Amen? Come on. Uh, pray with me today. My God. You have to fight even if you don't know how to fight, and even if you don't want to fight. Jesus. This is the season in which we're living in. You got family issues. There's friend issues. There's enemy issues. Wow. There's job issues. My God. Your issues have issues. Wow. Uh, you're married and your spouse still doesn't even trust you. Oh my God, your children didn't turn out the way you wanted them to. Uh, and some of you are in leadership roles and your peers and your congregation don't seem to respect you. Uh, people seemingly nowadays in your congregation and around you, your peers, they're putting more trust in what others say about you than what you know about them. Huh? Uh, they know how you operate, but they will let some naysayer convince them otherwise. Huh? So you put more trust in what others say about that person than what you really know about that person. I, I know some of you are going through that in leadership, that folks that are with are that are saying that I, I, I'm with you, Pastor, I'm with you, Bishop, I'm with you, Apostle, Apostle, and regard you highly with all honor and praise. But you're finding out slowly but surely that they really don't have your best interest in mind. Oh my God, what can you do for me? That's the, that's the question of this season. What can you do for me? Uh, and I come to let you know this afternoon, be very careful of the pat on the back. Yeah, Amen? All right, all right. Uh, so that right there, the things that I just said, that right there, along with all the other aforementioned situations, the feelings and the weight of it all is crushing. Mm -hmm. 
it's crushing, it's earth shattering and forceful enough to break the spirit of the best of us. Amen? Uh, you, you, you need to pay attention today. My God, in the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Uh, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Here we go. Here we go. So I know uh, that you're feeling like everything that life has thrown your way has had this crushing mentality. Uh, life lately has been a threshing. Now, a threshing involves crushing. Mm -hmm. Hear me. In the Hebrew, threshing means to trample out, to walk on, to mash, to press down hard. So that trampling out is done on what's called a threshing floor. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Let the church say amen. amen. Let the church. Now, if you sit on me, that's all right. I'm still going to preach. <laughs> you don't have to say nothing. I, I get my amen from up there. So, uh, so throughout the Old Testament of the Bible, the term threshing floor is used quite frequently. Once again, God wants us to get it through repetition. Everything that got the gospel is repetitive. The word of God is repetitive. That's why sometimes you jump and shout because you'll go somewhere else and hear the same message that you heard at another church. Because why? Because God wants you to get it. Amen. Amen. Uh, the primitive threshing floors of the Israelites are still in existence today. They are level spots of stamped and well-trodden earth. And they're about 50 feet in diameter. And they're set in positions most exposed to the wind so that the wind can help in separating the grain from the chaff. Uh -huh. I just want to pause right here and, and say, Lord, <laughs> let me sit in your wind, in the direction <laughs> of your wind. I want your wind, my God, to blow on me. Amen. My God. So uh, this threshing floor is set. So in the area that the wind seems to blow the most, my God, to help separate the grain from the chaff, from the, the chaff is the seed casings, the husk, or the hulls. Amen? So on these circular spots of hard earth, the uh, sheaves of grain of whatever kind are distributed in all sorts of disorder. Ah, I, I can guarantee that there's somebody in the sound of my voice that their life right now feels like it's in some sort of disorder. Uh, I can almost guarantee that somebody can stand and say with me, Pastor, it's all sorts of disorder. It's just not one thing. It is multiple things that are disorderly in my life. Hallelujah. So, so they're distributed, uh, this grain, of whatever kind of grain, and it doesn't matter in, in your life. It's not, like I said, just one thing. It's multiple things nowadays, and my God, and different. You'd be wondering, where in the world did this come from? I've never, my God, seen anything like this. Amen? Uh, so on these circular spots of, of hard earth, the, uh, 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 they're distributed, the, she the sheaves of grain of whatever kind are distributed in all sorts of disorder. So, and the oxen and the cattle trod on them. They, they walk on them. And sometimes uh, these beasts are driven round and round. My God, they go around in the circle, sometimes five deep. My God, trotting on this grain. Uh, so the stalk of the grain is extremely bruised and crushed by their walking. Ah, I can guarantee you, almost, my God, if I was a betting man, you could bet that somebody, my God, is feeling extremely bruised, my God, and crushed by my
my God, the things that life has been presenting to you, my God, this afternoon. I come to let you know, hold on. My God, I come to let you know, don't let go. My God, through the crushing, my God, through the trampling, my God, do not let go. Uh, threshing is very rough and can be wasteful if the amount of the grain is few. So you just can't put a little bit of grain on the threshing floor. By the time the cattle and oxen walk over it, you don't have anything. So you got to put large amounts. Amen? Okay, okay. So instruments are also employed, such as a flail or the sledge. Huh? They are made of planks joined together and furnished with rough studs on the undersurface to help crush the grain. Uh, I'm going somewhere. I'm going somewhere. And then there is the cartwheel. And that's made of wooden rollers or rollers of iron or stone. And it's dragged by the cattle over the sheaves. So this threshing is the process by which the grain husk or the chaff are loosened. Oh my God. I know that you wish that you're looking to be loose, my God, from your troubles this afternoon. And I want you to know that Jesus will loose you from your troubles this afternoon if you believe it. My God, let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. It is done after the fields, this threshing is done after the fields have been harvested and usually involves crushing the grain stalks on this flat surface or this threshing floor. Threshing is necessary before the final process of winnowing. And winnowing separates the husk from the edible grain by blowing a current of air through the grain before the grain is ground and stored. Oh my God. So I understand this afternoon, my God, that you're going through. I, I see you. I feel you. You're going through this afternoon. Don't think I, nobody sees you. Don't think nobody is feeling you. Don't think uh, no one is praying for you and with you. But you're going through. You're going through this crushing. You're going through this threshing, the, the rough side of the mountain. Your life feels like eternal damnation or eternal punishment. My God, there is a struggle that is going on in your life. You're stuck between two opinions, what you want to do and what is required by you, by God. Amen. Uh, I come to let you know, make up your mind. Make up your mind. God is waiting on you to make up your mind. When indecision creeps into your existing turbulent situation, hear me, your pride will stand up. And your pride will speak up to get you to make a decision void of God's counsel. Oh my God. So what happens here? Pride blinds you. And what happens here? Pride hinders you from separating the good from the bad. It's hard to make a conscious and good, my God, decision when your pride gets in the way. Amen? So very often we end up doing things our way, bless the Lord, and God is not pleased with us. And it brings about judgment from God, even in the midst of your adversity. Jesus. You're already going through, then you decide that you are going to change your situation, and you try it, and God is displeased, and he sends judgment on top of the adversity that you're going through. My God, I, I come to let you know this afternoon, don't compound your problem. Uh, don't compound your problem. My God, if it's too insurmountable and too much for you, give it to God. That's what we're talking about this afternoon. So we have an example of someone who we all 
are familiar with. Uh, someone who we all can relate to. It's in the Bible. Who has experienced similar issues, my God, that we face today. Hallelujah. His name is King David. Yes. Ah. Uh, David is somebody that you and I can relate to. Huh? Uh -huh. The things that David has gone through are very close to the things that we go through as human beings in this very season. Uh -huh. And God allowed, my God, that portion of David's life in the book of Psalms, uh -huh. by God, for our learning. Amen. So David let pride fill his heart from time to time. I'm going somewhere. And he took full advantage of his God-appointed and chosen position. Right. He was king over Israel. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And he, being the king, he could decide at any time, I'm going to do what I want to do. That's what got him in trouble with Bathsheba. Yeah. He saw her washing, bathing on the rooftop, and he knew she was married. He said, I want to go get her. Because he was king, nobody could say, king, don't do that. He's the king. He took, my God, the position that I'm the king. I can get whatever I want whenever I want it. That's pride. That's pride. So over in 1 Chronicles chapter 21, the Bible says this. And Satan stood up against Israel and provoked David to number Israel. Huh? So to number a people is to count them to see how many there are, like a census, right? So during the ancient cultures, here, pay attention, this is key. During the ancient cultures, a man only had the right to count or number what belonged to him. Amen? Amen. So this passage is really saying that God allowed Satan to provoke David to number the children of Israel because he wanted to test David's pride. I want you to know this afternoon that the tests and trials that come in your life, they ain't always Satan. Right. And if it is Satan, God very often sends Satan to handle certain things in your life, to cause upheaval, to cause distress. Huh? And a lot of times, when Satan did it, Satan did it, God said, no, I sent him. Mm -hmm. Amen? So God was fed up with the pride and the disobedience that David and the children of Israel had displayed. Uh -huh. Here is where David made his mistake. Uh -huh. And he allowed his pride to consume him. Uh -huh. Israel, listen, Israel didn't belong to David. Israel belonged to God. That's right, right, huh? right, that's right. Israel belonged to God. It was up to God to command a counting of his people. Right. And if David counted, he should only do it by God's command. Right. When here was David said, I, I need a count. Give me a count. Out of line. Made a mistake. So one of David's rulers of the people, he withstood David. He said, man, he said, I, I, Look, God, these are God's people, and God is the one that's going to direct you, David, to count the people, and, 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 and if need be. And David said, look, I'm the king. Uh -huh. Count the people. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Count them. And after David performed the count, God was greatly displeased. Jesus. My God. And after David performed the count, his own heart condemned him. See, that's the problem with pride. Pride will cause you to step out on your own. And then after you get out there in the middle of the big blue sea, you realize you're by yourself, with yourself, and you need God. And you're condemned now because you can't swim, and you need God to help you get to shore. Um, so now you can get, Lord, help. Uh, I'm not just talking about something I read in a book. Been there, done that, doctor. Hallelujah. So David knew. <laughs> David knew God was angry. Yeah. And he offered up, here we go, a prayer of forgiveness. David could pray. Yeah. That man could pray. Come on, David. This is what David said. He said, God, I have sinned greatly because I have done this thing, but now 
I beseech you, I beg of you, uh -huh. do away the iniquity of thy servant, uh -huh. boy, pray, for I have done very foolishly. Uh, so God, God didn't even want to talk to David. He didn't answer David. He went to a prophet, Gad. Uh -huh. God sent the prophet to David, offering David three forms of punishment for his sins. Mm -hmm. Three forms. He said, look, seven years of famine, or flee three months before your enemies, or three days plague in your land. My Lord. And the Bible says, and David said to Gad the prophet, I am in great distress. Please let us fall into the hand of the Lord, for his mercies are great. But do not let me fall into the hand of man. So this meant that David chose the three days of plague. Why? Because the other two options would have exempted David and his family from being a part of it, right? But the plague got everybody. And so David knew that. And he knew that he had to expose himself to the chastisement of God. Because God was after him. Huh? Uh, you don't want to fall in the hands of an angry God. Uh, he's full of his rich in mercy from everlasting to everlasting. But brother, when he, when he decides that I'm going to send judgment and wrath, nobody can stop him. Amen? So David knew this though. He knew that if I choose the plagues for three days, oh. that God was far more merciful and ah. gracious than oh. any man. Huh? Ah, so right here, this brings me to the core of the message this afternoon. Uh -huh. First Chronicles chapter 21, verses 14 through 15. And it reads as thus, so the Lord sent pestilence uh -huh. upon Israel. And there fell of Israel 70,000 men. And verse 15, And God sent an angel unto Jerusalem to destroy it. And as he was destroying, the Lord beheld, and he repented him of the evil. Wait a minute. God repented, and he repented him of the evil. And said, to the angel that destroyed, it is enough. Stay down thine hand. Right. And the angel of the Lord stood by the threshing floor of Ornan the Jebusite. Mm -hmm. My subject today from God to you is enough is enough. Oh. Enough is enough. Hey, hey, hey. Huh? Enough is enough. God sent a destroying angel to perform the punishment on the people. He was so displeased with David and all Israel that he was about to allow the angel to destroy, utterly destroy Jerusalem. Uh -huh. uh, but somewhere in the wrath of God, he subsided and it repent, God repented. Oh my God. He, why? Because he's God. He can do anything that he wants to do uh -huh. at any time. Who can call him into counsel? Uh -huh. The Bible said he repented of it. His wrath subsided. In other words, God changed his mind about destroying Israel because uh, Jerusalem, because Jerusalem is the city of God. This was God's place of fellowship with mankind. Note the words that God spoke to the angel. He said, it's enough. Jesus. Stay now, thy hand. Uh, I come all the way from Hampton, Georgia, this afternoon to tell you enough is enough. Hallelujah. I come to let you know that God has changed his mind about you. Jesus. I come to let you know God has changed his mind about the adversity that is in your life. Hallelujah. I come to let you know that God is saying enough is enough. Stay your hand, adversity. God, listen, listen. God sent the situations and tests and trials in your life. But this afternoon, he is rescinding it. He's canceling them. Come on, church. He's voiding them out. No, void enough. He's saying, that's plenty. That's sufficient. Stay your hand. In other words, stop. In other words, halt. In other words, cease from your destruction. My God, and the, your oppression and stop the pain and the sorrow.
sorrow and the sickness. Oh, Why? Hallelujah. He said, because I am God. Yes. And I have spoken. Yes. And these are my people. Jesus. And I am their God. And I seek their praise and their worship. Jesus. Now that I have altered and stopped and halted your adversary. Yes, it's atonement time. Ah, time to repent. Yes, and to relent. Yes. Let it go. Yes. Back to the threshing floor. Yes, what is the spiritual meaning. Of the threshing floor. Uh -huh. This is a symbol of heaven. Yes. And hell. The threshing floor has spiritual significance as a place where good and evil are separated. Yeah. And the threshing floor is symbolic of judgment. And God sent me all the way from Hampton to let you know that judgment is no longer to be you. Your situation has changed today. Enough is enough. Oh, God is saying, allow me to make you over. Allow me to change you. Allow me to turn you around and set your feet on solid ground. Allow me to set your face up. My God is a flint, hallelujah, and your feet is hind feet. My God, a hind is a deer, and he walks on the side of a mountain. And my God, when he jumps to one rock, and when he jumps to another rock, he's so stable that he don't even waver. He jumps on that rock and he's steady. Who is the rock? Jesus. I come to let you know if you're not God. Is 
God wants you. I don't care what you've done, who you've done it with. I don't care. God doesn't care about that. What you wear, not. He doesn't care. He cares about what's on the inside of you. Enough is enough. It's time for you to let go of your old ways, your old idea, your way of thinking, your way of doing things. Time to let it go and subscribe to this great God. Be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Receive the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God, speaking in other tongues. It's time. It's time. What are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? Why are you coming to church? Why are you looking at it on YouTube? Why are you looking at it on Facebook? Why are you even bothering with it if you don't want to have anything to do with God? Why? I know you're staying home because of the pandemic, but you're tuning in. Why? You know you need this great God. Because your life is upside down. But God told me to tell you, you and you, enough is enough. Stay your hand, angel of death. Some of you shouldn't even be here today. But God says, stay your hand, death. Get back. I'm God. I say, live and not die. You need to come. You need to come. You need to come. You need to rush to him. Lord, save me. Save me from this underworld generation. I need you. I got to have you. I can't live without you. My God. Look, all I say to you is just try it. Just try it. And if it doesn't work, well, amen. But give it a try. We try everything else. We'll, we'll take a sip of something we don't even know the ingredients. Somebody say, hey, man, take a sip of this. Well, what is it? Uh, just take a sip. We'll take a sip. But when we say try Jesus, well, we won't even give it a try. Hey, you won't, won't you won't try it? If it doesn't work, amen. Pastor Perry, thank you for, for the offer, but it's not for me. Amen. But I'm so glad you tried, but I double dog dare you to try this great God. He will turn you around. Uh, what you think that you don't want. Look, he'll make the atheist believe in him. Come on. My God. Won't you come? Won't you come? Don't let it be said too late. Don't let it be said too late. The day and the time that you hear the voice of God, open up your heart and come to Him. We don't know what this afternoon is promised. Forget about tomorrow. We don't even know what this afternoon, this evening is promised to us. We don't know. I'm not trying to frighten anybody. I'm not up here. Just, God is not spooky. God is real. Amen? Amen? So today, we praise God for His Word. The Word of God is life. And the word of God is a light up to our pathway so that we may find him. Enough is enough. God has said that. So look, when you leave here today, you should be looking right now through your life. Go through the leaves, the, 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 the pages of your life right now. Oh, that, that, that's bothering me, that, that, that. God is already saying enough, enough. Stay in hand, enough, enough. Say enough is enough and it's over. Amen. We praise God for you. If there's anyone in the sound of my voice that needs prayer, just come forward and we'll pray for you. Amen. Come on, clap your hands. Hallelujah. For the word of God. Enough is enough. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank God for that. Hallelujah. Let's stretch our hands to our pastor. Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask for you to send strength, renewal, revival, restoration, oh God, to this man of God. Pour back into him what he's poured to your people. Cover him in the blood of Jesus from every satanic attack. In the name of Jesus, oh God, bless him one hundredfold for being obedient to the assignment. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Praise God for the service thus far. Hallelujah. This time we are going to prepare for our offering. So if uh, Deacon Brown can come, hallelujah, and get your offering together.
As always, uh, we do accept all forms. If you are giving electronically, we do have options for you that are on your offering envelope, cash app, PayPal, Zelle, GiveLify app. Hallelujah. And those forms of giving are on your envelope. If you need an envelope, please raise your hand and you have so our yes. announcements. And we're going to ask one of our young people to come. Um, Brother Quavion, if you could come and read our announcements. Hallelujah. Come on, clap your hands for our young people. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. I will be reading our church announcements. Please listen carefully. Amen. Youth Amen. Bible Connection will continue this Tuesday at 7 o'clock p.m. in our virtual sanctuary on Zoom. All young people are welcome. Deep Dive Bible Study will continue this Thursday at 7.30 p.m. in our virtual sanctuary on Facebook Live. There will be no 2.30 Sunday service on December 24th or December 31st. Please take that time to enjoy your families during this holiday season. Details regarding watch night service for December 31st will be shared soon. Please govern yourselves accordingly. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 